This video will demonstrate how to design a composite steel girder that is unshored during construction in visual analysis using the unshored defined load construction type. This construction type should be used when the assumptions for the unshored approximate construction type are violated, such as when the beam is not simply supported, the precomposite loads are not uniform, or when camber needs to be considered. Let's get started. To effectively use visual analysis to design composite beam members, only the steel members should be modeled. The stiffness from the concrete slab or from the member offset should not be included in the model as these will be automatically accounted for in the design checks. The unshored defined load construction type allows both pre-composite and composite strength and deflection demands to be calculated and checked in visual analysis for a variety of loading and member support conditions. The versatility of this construction type requires that construction load cases be created in the load case manager. In this example, we will look at a simply supported girder that is 30 feet long, which supports 45 foot long simply supported beams framing into the girder at third points as shown in the plan view. The ribs for the metal deck form will run perpendicular to the beams and parallel to the girder that we are designing. In visual analysis, the W24 by 76 girder has already been drawn with the pin roller boundary conditions. In the load case manager, we will create a few service cases to apply our dead construction load, our live construction load, and the load that will be used to simulate the beam's camber. For the dead load case, we will check the blocks to include it in the building code combinations, and we will include the self weight to account for the weight of the steel girder. The construction live load case and the camber case will not be included in the building code combinations. Now we can apply loads to the girder in the various service cases. In the dead load construction service case, we will apply the dead load that the girder will experience in its pre-composite state, such as the weight of the steel beams, the concrete deck, and the metal deck form. In the live load construction service case, we will apply the live loads that the girder will experience in its pre-composite state, such as the weight of the concrete placement equipment and the weight of the construction workers. In the camber service case, we will apply a fictitious upward load to camber the girder the desired amount. Switching to the results view, we can see that the applied load causes the girder to be cambered three quarters of an inch. Note, for uncambered beams, simply do not include the camber service case or the camber loads. In the dead load service case, we will apply the additional dead load that the composite girder will experience, such as the weight of the flooring or the weight of permanent mechanical equipment. Note, we do not want to include the pre-composite dead loads for this case. In the live load service case, we will apply the occupancy live loads that the composite girder will experience. In the load case manager, we see the five service cases where we define the loads. To summarize, the dead load, construction dead load, and camber have dead load sources, while the live load and construction live load both have live load sources. The dead load, live load, and construction dead load were set to be included in the building code combinations, while the construction live load and the camber were not. The dead load's case includes the additional load the composite girder will experience, such as the weight from the flooring or mechanical equipment, the live load case includes load from the occupants. The construction dead load case includes the weight of the steel members, the concrete deck, and the metal deck form. The construction live load case includes the weight of construction equipment and workers. And finally, the camper case includes a fictitious load to deform the member. We will now set up the load combinations in the load case manager. First, we will create a 1.2 construction dead load plus 1.6 construction live load combination for the LRFD strength checks. Next, we will create a construction dead load deflection combination that will include the construction dead load and the camber. For the composite strength checks, we can simply select the ASCE 716 LRFD building code. Notice that the construction dead load and the additional composite dead load are both included in the combinations, which is correct. If we select the deflection checks, we see that both the pre-composite dead load and the additional composite dead load are both included in the combinations. This is not correct since the permanent pre-composite deflection, that is the construction dead load deflection, is automatically added to the composite deflections. To fix these combinations, we can convert them to custom 
and remove the construction dead load from all of the non-construction load combinations. To summarize, we have created a construction strength load combination that includes the construction dead load and the live load. We have also created a construction deflection load combination that includes the construction dead load and the camber. We have created the non-construction load combinations for the composite member that includes the construction dead load plus the additional dead loads and the live load from the occupants. Also, we have created non-construction deflection load combinations that do not include the construction dead load or camber since the permanent pre-composite deflections are automatically added to the composite deflections in visual analysis. Switching to the result view, we can see the analysis results for the various load combinations. The deflection for the non-construction dead, live, and dead plus live cases appear large since they were computed using the moment of inertia of the non-composite beam. Prior to performing the deflection checks, these results will be scaled by the ratio of the beam's moment of inertia to the lower bound moment of inertia to account for the composite stiffness of the beam and slab system. These scaled composite deflection results will be added to the permanent pre-construction deflection results to produce the total deflection. Note, in the result view, visual analysis does not know that the beam is composite since the composite parameter is not defined until we are in the design view. Therefore, the deflections in the result view are not adjusted to account for the composite action. The deflections that account for the composite action are only visible in the design view and the design report. Switching to the design view, we will select the beam and mark it as composite. This causes additional sections in the Modify tab to appear so that the parameters for the concrete slab, the deck, and the anchors can be specified. First, we will set the construction type to Unsure Defined Load. With this construction type chosen, the bracing pre-composite section appears so that we can specify how the beam is braced during construction. For our case, we will assume that the metal deck form cannot continuously brace the top flange of the girder during construction since the ribs are parallel to the girder. We will assume that the beams brace the top flange of the girder at third points. Next, we will specify the deflection limits using the member span ratios. We will use 360 for live load only, 240 for dead plus live load, and 360 for the other case, which includes the dead load only case. Note, these deflection limits are used for both construction and non-construction deflection load combinations. Moving on to the concrete slab parameters, we will use a 7.5 inch thick slab and set the girder spacing to 45 feet or 540 inches on center. For the deck type, we will have ribs that are parallel to the span of the girder. A deck profile will be chosen from the database, and we will use a 3 VLI 18 gauge deck. Finally, let's define the steel anchors to connect the slab to the beam. We will use 3 quarter inch diameter headed studs with a strength of 65 KSI. The studs will be 4.5 inches long, and we will use two rows of studs on the girder. In visual analysis, the member can be divided into multiple equal length regions, and the stud spacing can be set for each region of the girder. Looking at the graph for the factor dead plus live load non-construction combination, we see that the moment demand changes significantly in the first third and the last third of the girder and hardly changes in the center third of the girder. To tailor the moment capacity to this demand and provide an efficient design, more studs should be placed in the end regions than in the center region. Therefore, we will create three member divisions and space the anchors at 9 inches on center for the first and last region and 30 inches on center for the center region. Clicking OK, we now look at the girder and see that the unity is less than 1, which means that the girder has passed. Had the girder failed, we could adjust the girder's section, the slab, the deck, or the anchor parameters to increase the stiffness and strength of the system. Double-clicking on the member produces a report for the member. In this report, we see that the strong deflection checks and the composite beam checks both have maximum unity values less than 1. For the deflection check, the dead plus live case has the maximum unity value. This means that the total deflection case controls over the pre-composite construction deflection case. In the details column, we see the permanent pre-composite deflection that's based on the analysis results. We also see the composite deflections from the analysis results that we factored by the ratio of the girder's moment of inertia to the lower bound moment of inertia. 
The sum of these two values equals the total deflection demand. For the composite beam check, the 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live non-construction load case has the maximum unity value. This means that the composite case controls over the pre-composite case. In the details column, we see that only partial composite behavior is achieved at this particular offset. Notice that the maximum unity value occurs right before the first point load, which is located at an offset of 120 inches. Since visual analysis also checks the capacity of the pre-composite beam for the construction loading, had the construction live load been larger, the construction load combination would have controlled for the pre-composite loading. In just a few minutes, we have used visual analysis to design a composite steel girder that was unsure during construction. Using the unsure defined load construction type, visual analysis was able to check both the strength and deflection limit states for both the construction and the composite conditions. The unsure defined construction type was able to handle the non-uniform construction dead loads, account for camber, and could have also been used had the beam not been simply supported. Check out the other training videos to learn how to design beams that are shored during construction or for an overview of composite beam design and visual analysis. Thanks for watching and have a great day.